research and discovery. Futurists. Late afternoon at a small village in northeastern Greece. The church is 200 years old and boasts around 50 precious post-Byzantine icons, most of them created in the prestigious local Galatista School of Icon Painting. The priest has been studying these icons for more than 30 years. He says they're historical objects, works of art and tools for the faithful. In the Greek Orthodox Church, we believe icons are open books where believers can find the sources of their faith. Back in the old days, illiterate people would find in icons the same information that educated people learned from books. Icons help us to worship. They're a link between humans and God. For us, icons are windows through which believers can reach the skies. In a small laboratory near the church, they work on preserving the priceless religious items. This one is a 19th century icon from the Galatista school. Priest and preserver both agree that icons should never be repainted. First, they identify the artist, the school it belongs to, the painting techniques, and when it was previously restored. Then they carefully analyze the different layers of color and varnish before it gets a thorough clean. Πρέπει πρώτα απ' όλα να ξέρουμε την ποιότητα των υλικών στις εικόνες. A key task in conservation is protecting the varnishing layers. Varnishes can be cleaned or removed by using solvents. But these solvents can also damage the colors underneath. So we need to know what pigments were used originally and their concentration. That way we'll be able to use the right solvent and further protect the icon και ε, να μην προκαλέσουμε έτσι κάποια βλάβη ε, κατά τη διάρκεια του καθαρισμού. It was this need to unravel the ancient secrets of the icon's colors that put her in contact with this chemical engineer. He's coordinating a European research project to identify the pigments used all over the Mediterranean for centuries to paint icons and murals and to dye textiles. He hopes his research will help to improve ways of preserving historical works of art. Colouring materials, of course, uh, can be inorganic uh, pigments, but also we have the organic colouring materials, which can be of plant origin or of animal origin. Uh, so, first of all, we try to perform uh, a detailed historical survey. Then the next approach is the physicochemical approach. The physics and the chemistry are done here at the research center in Ormilia in northeast Greece. They make spectrographs from microscopic fragments of historic icons to establish which materials produced the pigments. This machine helps us to focus on specific colouring layers, even in the small grains that form those layers. So we can analyse the chemical structure of those grains and we can determine, for instance, if they're organic or inorganic. If the pigments prove to be organic, the scientists have to move on to a more complex technique. They use chromatography to isolate which plants or insects were used to produce the dye. Once that's done, they can work out how a specific organic material, like the madder plant for instance, was used to produce a specific red color. We tried uh, to reproduce uh, the traditional uh, coloring technologies that have been used in the Mediterranean Sea, using uh, traditional historical recipes, which however have been translated uh, by phys modern physicochemical 
uh, terms. These recipes have been reproduced at the laboratory scale and at a later stage we uh, will try to reproduce them uh, at an industrial scale. Researchers at the Faculty of Fine Arts at the University of Marmara in Istanbul are looking at ways of updating age-old colour recipes. In this experiment, they're using a Turkish insect species to produce a red dye. Dried insects are first crushed and then added to boiling hydrochloric acid. Wool is soaked in the dye and kept at boiling point for about 10 minutes. Afterwards, the modern coloured sample is cleaned and dried so it can be analysed and compared to dyed textiles of yesterday. This is the Bu laboratuvar uh, organic pigments uh, üretti. We try to stick to the same dyeing methods and recipes that were used in ancient times. And then we change variables like the quality of organic material, the chemical mixtures, temperature or the time of dissolving and evaporation until we're able to produce pigments that are identical to the historical ones. The scientists use up to 200 different species of plants and five species of insects to produce their palette of organic pigments. It's hoped their work will improve the ingredients used to restore ancient Anatolian carpets. Different kinds of dye have been used in different historical times. So past restorations were difficult and usually they weren't done properly. What we're trying to do is to standardize dyeing processes with organic materials so that we'll be able to improve the dyeing process and help restore us. One of those restorers is based in a bazaar in Istanbul. Ali Osman Aykul has been restoring carpets for 20 years using skills which have been handed down from generation to generation. His workshop is a treasure trove for the scientists who are constantly in search of well-worn historical carpets to study. Some of these carpets are 200 years old. Most come from Anatolia and they all need urgent attention with properly dyed textiles. For years, most of the textiles we used for carpet restoration had been dyed with synthetic products. And the restored colors faded away really easily and very fast. Now we only use textiles dyed with organic pigments issued from technical research. And the result is far better. Colors don't fade away any longer. It's a result the researchers and the restorers have been dying to achieve. <laughs>